Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at ZBrush 2022, the most recent release from the folks at Pixie Logic, and this comes with a couple of cool improvements. So for a couple of days, I've been trying this and it is uh, quite interesting to see the amazing things that you can now do with it. And for sure, if you would like to get this, you can actually go over to Pixie Logic and get it. And if you already have an existing license, contrary to how you update your previous versions of ZBrush, you would need to go over to your ZBrush licenses and download it from there. This is a fresh install contrary to previous versions. And uh, once you install this as a fresh installation, you would also be able to update it as it goes. But then if you do not own ZBrush license, you might need to download a ZBrush 14 day trial, which you can use to follow up with some of the amazing cool things that is now available here. So ZBrush 2022 does come with a couple of things. For example, there is the beautiful bar relief, which we're going to talk about. The bevel is also a pretty cool one. Two by two is amazing. The detailing, adjustment, alignment, and also distribution looks pretty cool. There is this beautiful update to the knife tool. And you know, we mentioned all this and the interplate is also something that makes a lot of sense to me. Finally, we have the XMD toolbox. But of course, there's even way more things that you'll be able to do with this. And with that said, let's take a look at ZBrush 2022 and talk about how these things actually work. So with ZBrush 2022, simply open right here, we have a scene which is uh, definitely going to be our demo scene and it has a couple of things here. So in most cases, what you do is you actually open up your sub tool and you turn these things off one after the other just because you like to focus and work on one, but that is no longer the case. So the folks at Pixie Logic have added a visibility set. So in this case, you can choose from one to eight and set certain things to be visible at a given time so that you can focus on those things and work on them. So in this case, if I go over to V2, I can turn on every other thing minus the dogs. I can just go ahead and turn off that dog. And maybe on V3, I can simply let the dog be and turn off every other thing. And maybe for V4, we could just simply turn on the cube and turn off the dog and also have it right here. So in this case, if we go over to V1, we would have everything turned on. V2 would have the selected things turned on. V3, we're only going to have the dog. And uh, because, you know, we have the selected, so we have only the dog active. And then for V4, we would have just the cube visible. So this is definitely going to be very handy and save you so much mouse travel time, especially if you're working on complex objects and you would like to have a couple of things visible at a given time. And for sure, this is actually a great addition to ZBrush 2022. Now, moving forward, there is also a pretty cool update that deals with something known as the bars relief. So we've already mentioned that the bars relief was going to come over to ZBrush 2022 and it looks pretty interesting. So if you would like, to project onto a surface, what you can now do is you can have the object you like to project on and you can have the object you would want to project. So in this case, we are looking at the simple dog and we would like to project this dog right on this particular cylinder, which we would call our coin. So let's just scale this down about a bit like that. And then we can also scale this about a bit like this, looking good. All right. So how you can work with the bas relief is extremely simple as you can simply make sure that the object that you would like to project and also the base object that will be projected on are both visible. Then you need to select the main object, go over to your sub tool, go all the way down and you notice that we have the project bas relief right here. Go all the way down and then click on project bas relief and what will happen is depending on the position of the object that will be projected, this will project the object directly onto the surface. Now, if we rotate this, you would also notice that we're having the negative sign here. And to prevent this is uh, very simple. All you need to do is make sure that you have the object still selected, hold on, control the keyboard and mask one part. And once you do that, make sure you have the dog turned back on, or, you know, the object that you will want to work with turned back on, select the base model, and then click on project bas relief one more time. So once this is done, you would notice that you have the very same projection that you've always wanted, but then we don't have this thing on the other side. Now the bas relief doesn't just end there because at this point you can also create alpha bas relief out of this. And how you can do this is also very simple as you can just go over and uh, position the object however you want. And in this case, if you like to position the object like so, you can do that. Let's double click here, go over to alpha, and we're just going to dock this alpha right here. So with the alpha panel open, if you go over to bas relief, you can see that we can make 
an alpha out of the bas relief. So if I click on make bas relief as an alpha, it is going to take a look at the model and then create an alpha for us right here based off the position that this object is in space. And you can also tell that there is some sort of depth going on with this. Now, if your object has textures on it, you can also proceed to turn on the B texture and make a bas relief. And this would also get the bas relief alongside with texture. So just in case you like to imprint this or project this onto another surface by simply working with the alphas, this is something that is extremely possible. So with this, you can start creating some very interesting and lovely looking art. And uh, this just makes a lot of sense. And a huge shout out to the folks at Pixel Logic for implementing this. Now, something else that they've also implemented that makes a lot of sense for me is the stager so you remember the last time we talked about the stager we said that the stager does have a home stage and also a target stage and what the folks at pixel logic have done is they've created this sort of interpolation thing that can help you create array or distribute a series of mesh from one point to another so once you have an object like this here we can proceed to just keep this as well you know set this as the home stage and then position this somewhere here and let's just scale this down about a point like that and position this part and set it as the target stage so we can switch between these two and by default this is going to be very useful for those trying to create props so just in case you'd like to see this prop within the full view you can have it and if you would like to get this prop to fit into a particular place you can also set the target space but right now, the interpolation now makes even way more sense as they've added this feature to it. And you can now use this to distribute one object from one position to another. So since we already have this as the home stage and then we have this as the target stage, if we would like to distribute this from here all the way to this other part, what we can do is to simply click on the word interpolate. And once we do that, we can see what we have and the number of counts of your interpolation can be set from here. So we can go in and set this all the way to six. And once we have it there, click on the word interpolate and you can see this. Now the interpolate doesn't only work for objects like this as the interpolate also works with strokes. So with a simple object like this, we can also choose to work with it. So let's go ahead and take off the alphas and also the colors and then change this to freehand and look at it. So in this case, if we come in here and uh, let's say we make a stroke like so and choose to make another stroke right here. If we go over to the stroke section and scroll all the way down here, you would notice that we have the interpolate as well. You can also see the number of counts. So we can set this all the way to eight, click on interpolate, and it will take a look at the first stroke and then the last stroke, and it will interpolate between these two. Now for the fun part, you can choose to interpolate also based of colors at the same time based of stroke. So with this object here, if we go over to color and then we choose to fill this object, and let's say we set this to red and we make a simple paint across like so and then we set this to blue and then we make a paint like this if we go all the way to stroke and go right here to where we have interpolate you would also notice that we have this nice gradient interpolation going from one color all the way to the next now let's talk about something else that is pretty cool so for this i did go ahead to get a tab now let's talk about the new thing now there's a new cool feature that is here called the alpha and texture which deals with a two by two thing so at this point you can load two alphas so in this case if i go in and select an alpha like that and also click right here and i can select another alpha so in this case i would just go ahead and select something else let's look for something crazy all right we can select the star so what this would help you do is at this point, you can now use two different alphas on an object and these things work based off the pen pressure. So at this point, if you use a lighter pen pressure like so, you would notice that we're getting the very first one. And if you punch this in, you start seeing that we have the star underneath. Now, uh, this might not really be like the best example. So let's just zoom all the way out so that you guys can see that. Let's actually do that with this. Zoom all the way out so that you guys can see that. So in this case, if you're using a low pressure, you would notice that we are getting the alpha coming out, which is this one. And if we punch this all the way in, you can now see that we have a perfect blend. You can choose to control these things from here. So in this case, you can flip this. I can flip that there, bring this down here, push this all the way up and you can see that. So let's undo what we have going on here. Let's uh, really do that quickly. And for sure, if I paint through, you can now see that we're having this flipped 
And you can also just paint this lightly. You can see that if you're painting a bit more, you can see that as well. And this doesn't only work with the alphas. You can also choose to play with textures as well. So in this case, if I just go ahead and turn this off and let's turn this off and let's close that and go over to the texture, we can select the texture, say maybe a texture like this, maybe we can select a texture like that and another texture like this. And for sure, if we go in and we start painting, Actually, we need to switch this to RGB and turn this off. Then let's go ahead and make sure that we have the painting turned on. So if we go in and start painting, you would notice that since we, you know, if we push this a bit more, we are getting this. But if we push this lightly, we will be getting the very first one, which is this one. And by the way, you can choose to mix these two together. So I can go in and select something like that and mix it up with, you know, something like this. And uh, we can have two different alphas and at the same time, two different textures driving this object. So if I don't do that and turn on the Z add, we can do something like this. And you can see, you can use this to start creating some very interesting things. So maybe you like to paint some landscapes and stuff like that. This will come in handy. And of course, this can also come in very handy for detailing several parts of your object. So with this said, let's move on and take a look at some other features that is also available with ZBrush 2022. So now that we're back here, let's take a look at two more interesting updates. Right now, if you hold down Shift and Control on your keyboard and switch over to where you have your quick picks for your sculpting brushes that you can use for hard surface sculpting, you would now notice that the knife tool now comes in as both a rectangular and a circular object. Now, previously, we did see the knife tool come in as a single line tool, but now you can use the lasso, the rectangle, and also the circular stroke to cut your meshes. So in this case, if I select the rectangular and I cut through, you can see that this cuts through pretty nice. And if I simply go all the way and switch this back to circular and I cut, this is going to cut and you can see what we have. But this doesn't create holes at this point. So if I would like to create a hole, this is not something that you can actually do right now. But if you just want to cut things, you know, from edge to edge, yes, you can. So you can just simply cut this from one point to another and you can start having fun with it. So we can cut that and we can also switch to this and then we can cut this in half. And, you know, you can just simply go ahead and start having fun. And of course, this makes up to something that I would love to talk about, which is a huge, huge update that is now available in ZBrush known as the Bevel Pro. So the Bevel Pro is now here and it exists right under your subtool. So if you go over to your subtool, go over to Bevel Pro, if you click on this button, this is going to open up a brand new window. And the beautiful thing is this takes advantage of your processing unit and, uh, you know, it does a whole lot of things. So first off, it doesn't matter how heavy your scene is or how heavy the object is. This is definitely going to give you some good old fashioned beveling. So with a scene like this, what we can do is we can increase the bevel amount. And uh, once we do that, this is going to process and then you can see it. So you can see how much beveling we're getting out of this. And you can choose to polish these things by group if you want. And of course, you can also push the polygon angle. Now, if you like to smooth your bevels, you can also use the bevel smoothness to smooth the bevels. And once you're done, you can click on automatic apply. Or you can simply just go ahead and click on OK to get this here. And you can see real quick, you now have your beautiful bevels going on. Now, if you like to save this so that you can work with it later on, what you can do is also pretty simple. So once we have this here, we can go over to the Bevel Pro and instead of adding the automatic apply, we can simply just preview the edges just to see what the edges look like. Let's increase this a bit more just to get something like that. And for sure, we can just simply let this be and click on OK. So once we click on OK right now, you would notice that it did not apply this automatically. Rather, we have the main object itself and then we have the bevel. So you can see that we have the first one and then we have the second one. And uh, if I simply turn this off and go right here, you can see what we have. And underneath this, this is working with the live Boolean. So the live Boolean is what is driving this object at this time. And you can use this to do some very cool stuff. So it's also worth knowing that once you're beveling your stuff, you should also keep in mind that you might have some sort of artifacts right here. So if I just go ahead and undo this part, so let's uh, just go ahead and undo that part. Let's delete it. Click on OK to get rid of that. Have this here and uh, let's just move this further and go back to the Bevel Pro 
and I'm just going to tone things down just uh, just a little bit so that we can see some very cool, cool stuff. So I can just turn this a little bit lower, you know, just keep it at a point like this and then click on automatic apply to apply that. And you'd also notice, like I mentioned earlier, you might be having a couple of tiny artifacts from here. And if I click on OK, we can also OK that and these automatically applies. So if you would like to automatically apply this bevel, I would suggest that you do that so that you can have some very cleaner and nicer looking meshes. You no longer need to bother about the live boolean. But then if you like to have several pieces so that you can tweak these pieces and do stuff with it, you might need to leave it at the auto crease and not the auto apply. And that way you can have fun working with this. There's also a couple of updates to other things that deals with the scribble chizu and the alignment. And for the alignment to actually see this one in action, all we need to do is uh, simply go ahead and turn these things on. So I'm just going to turn this one on as well. If you like to have these objects to align to the position of this one, all we need to do is just simply make sure that we have this object selected. Let's go ahead and check this one out and clear this mask. Right. Okay. So what we need to do is uh, we need to have this object selected. And then if we go all the way down here, we can click on a line and then click on the base and every other object is going to be aligned to this particular point. And the same thing happens with distribute. So just in case you like to distribute your object based off a given distance, you can also do that. So if I click on this, you notice that these, you know, simply moves the object based off the original distances. So I can also do the same thing here. Just click on this and then click on this other one and uh, we can have that distance and in this case if i would also like to play with the distance a little bit more we can have this here hold down alt to select so that you can select that so and of course i can have this and position this one right over there and position this right over here and we can play with the distance and the distance based of the distribution so we can have that going and we can have this going and of course we can also choose to align everything together by clicking on this button and all these other sub tools just align perfectly and if we bring this down we can click on this button and the other ones just simply align so pretty cool and interesting stuff and it's also worth knowing that there are updates to your dynamesh so in this case if you're working with dynamesh and then you would like to select a resolution you can now do that so if i select this object as it is and let's just simply go all the way actually let's do that with this one so if we select that object and go all the way to where we have geometry and dynamesh and because we have dynamesh turned on you would now notice that our dynamesh now has a picker now with this picker we can now select different resolution types so if we like a resolution like this a resolution like this one or that one we can now use the picker to select the resolution so in this case if i go in and use this button and click on the picker i can now pick a resolution that i want and that would select the resolution or i can simply click and drag and select that resolution so in this case if you would like to dynamesh based off a given resolution you can use the picker to select a given resolution and that would apply there or you can select this resolution and you can also notice that this simply updates so if i click drag all the way to this point you can see it simply updates as we travel through and these are the resolution or this is the resolution that dynamesh would use to remesh or simply dynamesh this model so this is more like it for those who like to take a look at this maybe you want to see some more updates from the folks at pixelogic you might want to come through and check it out and if you're thinking about getting XMD toolbox, you can also go ahead and check out XMD 3.0, which is currently free and available for ZBrush users. And you can take advantage of this beautiful tool and start working with it. We've already made a video about it. I'm going to link that in the description just in case you have no idea how this works. As you'll be getting about 300 free brushes that you'll be working with once you do have a subscription so tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss next video or the next update and i'll see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace